Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the Earth Druid in Diablo 4. I intend for this guide to be the most in-depth guide I have ever created. The Earth Druid in particular interests me greatly because of how much synergy there is, how much is available for the Earth Druid just from dungeons, so it's great for leveling, and then an incredibly powerful late game that looks completely different from the early game. The Earth Druid, in my opinion, changes the most throughout the leveling experience, especially once they get certain uniques and levels legendary aspects, their playstyle completely changes multiple times, and so I find it to be more the, the most interesting, the most engaging, but then also it can be the most confusing to put together, but I also think it's going to be the most powerful, one of the most powerful builds in the game, and so this video might be long, but I want to walk you through exactly each step of the way how to put together an Earth Druid, and I've spent hours and hours and hours looking over the different skills, passives, legendary aspects, and even paragon boards to put together what I believe will be the best possible way to build your earth druid. So let's get started since it's going to take some time to go through it all. So let's start with our skills. You know, you might be tempted to immediately choose earth spike, but I found earth spike to be one of the weakest basic skills out of all of them. And actually, I would recommend you go storm strike. There is a ton of synergy provided by storm strike for the earth druid, and we're going to get into all of it, which I'm really excited for. The reason earth strike is so great is because it's going to chain to three enemies, so it's a little bit of AoE damage. It also gives you 20 25% damage reduction for three seconds after dealing damage with it. So 25 damage reduction from a basic skill is really strong. We're also going to get Enhanced Storm Strike so that it has a 15% chance to immobilize all enemies hit for two and a half seconds. So that could be three enemies. This is very, very good because we're going to get Landslide, which does some nice earth damage. We're going to get Enhanced Landslide, which says after Landslide damages enemies four times, the next hit will immobilize enemies for three seconds. And then the key ability here is Primal landslide. Now it's a little bit confusing, but what happens is it says here when you immobilize or stun an enemy, you gain a terremote. Each enemy hit by landslide consumes a terremote, causing a guaranteed critical strike with 40% increased critical strike damage. Bosses always have a 10% chance to grant a terremote when hit. So notice the beginning, right? When you immobilize or stun an enemy, you gain a terremote. Our basic skill right here has a 15% chance to immobilize three enemies because this chains. So already there is an incredible amount of synergy just between this basic ability and this core ability, allowing you to get tons of guaranteed critical strikes, which is very, very potent. It gets even better though. Fierce Storm Strike gives Storm Strike a 50% chance to make enemies vulnerable for three seconds. That means 20% increased damage. So we have 20% increased damage, and we also have a guaranteed critical strike chance with 40% increased critical strike damage. As you can see, this build is already shaping up to be incredibly powerful. Now, when it comes to your next skill points, it can be tempting to put them in to wild impulses, which make your core skills deal more damage at the cost of more spirit. But you can actually get the same amount of increased damage without having to put a point into the Heart of the Wild prerequisite by just putting them straight into Landslide. You can also put a point into Earthen Bulwark. This is going to, uh, by itself, give you a barrier, but you're going to want to upgrade it into uh, Enhanced Earthen Bulwark, which will make you unstoppable while active. This can be very useful against bosses like the Blood Bishop or any other boss that can grab you, make you crowd controlled. When you're crowd controlled, you can't use potions and you could potentially die during that crowd control. Once you get this ability, which is very important for your survivability, continue to put points into Landslide because this is going to be your primary damage dealing ability. Now, once that is fully pumped up, you finally unlock the Companion Skill Tree. You're going to want to put one point into Vine Creeper. This is sort of a one point wonder ability because it allows you to do an AoE immobilization with the activated ability. It says here, Vines strangle all surrounding enemies, immobilizing them for two seconds and poisoning them for 30 damage over two seconds. As you know from Primal Landslide, whenever we immobilize or stun an enemy, we gain a Terramote, which is essentially a guaranteed critical strike with our next landslide. And so this allows us to get generate even more Terramotes, but this time in an AoE larger than Storm Strike, which is limited to three monsters. This could get seemingly infinite depending on how many can fit within the Vine Creeper AoE. So this is a very, very powerful skill. We don't really need these other ones because we already have guaranteed critical strikes once we immobilize, so we won't need this increased critical strike chance, but we will get it later. And then Enhanced Vine Creeper, we don't really need to increase the immobilization duration because all we need to do is immobilize them once and we get that Terramote. Now we also want to put three points into Nature's Reach. This is where the build starts getting a little bit crazy. Nature's Reach reads, deal 9% increased damage to distant enemies. Double this bonus if they are slowed, stunned, immobilized, or knocked back. We have Storm Strike for immobilization and we have Vine Creeper for immobilization. So we deal 9% damage when they're farther away, just not melee range. And then that will deal 18% damage when they're immobilized from Storm Strike or Vine Creeper. And don't forget, it's also going to 
to be guaranteed critical strikes with those terror motes. Pretty crazy. Now we need to unlock the next tier down here, which is Wrath. So I recommend going up here, put another point into Landslide, and now it's five out of five, and we can continue onto the Wrath part of the tree. Now Wrath has some really awesome stuff for Earth. In fact, this is where Earth gets the most powerful, in my opinion. We do want to pick up Boulder because we want another active ability we can use. This is a 10 second cooldown, and you'll want to be using this as often as you can. This does quite a bit of damage, and then Enhanced Boulder and Natural Boulder. Now we're level 19. We unlock the Druid Spirit Boon at level 15, and that involves going to Skaz Glen, and there's a lot you can get in Skaz Glen. So we're actually going to take a break on the skills really quick, and let's say we're going to Skaz Glen around level 15. So keep that in mind, and we're actually we have a lot of work to do there because there's nothing really for us in Fractured Peaks when it comes to legendary aspects. So let's say we we get to the Spirit Boon. I like Gift of the Stag. That gives you plus 10 maximum spirit, and you can also get the one that makes you take 10 percent reduced damage from elites i think that one is really strong too however we're going to look for feral's den and feral's den has what i believe is the most powerful legendary aspect for the earth druid which is aspect of quicksand this makes it so that damage from earth skills slow enemies hit by 25 percent for five seconds and again feral's den in skazglen once every single one of your earth abilities cause slow you can now put points into this here which is called crushing earth earth skills deal five percent increased damage to slowed stun immobilized or knocked back enemies and you can put three points into that and that will give you 15 percent increased damage so to add it all up we've got 18 percent right here to enemies that are distant and slowed plus another 15 percent here we've got wild impulses here which you want to put points into finally heart of the wild three points into wild impulses which is 30 percent increased damage at the cost of 15 percent more spirit so we're going to have more spirit requirements right well there's actually an aspect we can get uh later but while we're in skaz glen we're going to continue to get more earth aspects because there is a ton of them here for them. So I would then get uh, the ballistic aspect. It reads, when you have fortify, your earth skills gain plus two ranks. This is unlocked by completing whispering pines and Skazglen. So this is where you're going to start getting fortify with your skills in order to maintain uh, plus two ranks to all your skills. And so once you get that, you put one point into preserving earth and bulwark. Now bulwark is going to fortify for 18% of your base life. So perfect timing for that. Once you get that legendary aspect and then you're also going to want to get safeguard which is right here after we got crushing earth critical strikes with earth skills fortify you for 2.2 percent base life and you can get more or less but really one point is all you need in order to begin getting this plus two skill it just says when you have fortify it doesn't actually specify how much so you can very easily get this and of course once you are high enough level you do want to get petrify your ultimate ability uh, this is going to be very helpful versus bosses you can see here against bosses critical strike damage bonus is increased to 50 percent and its duration is increased to 25 seconds. Petrify is what I like to call a boss killer. This is what makes Earth Druids, I believe, probably one of the strongest class spec combinations for defeating bosses. A 25 second long uh, ultimate is absurd. It's going to make it so that your critical strikes deal 50% more damage. Absolutely insane. Now, once you do get this, it is time to go up here and get Brutal Vine Creeper because bosses can't be crowd controlled. And so you're not going to have as many Terra Motes, but you, do, you can still get, uh, get them right here. It's says bosses always have a 10% chance to grant a terra mote when hit, but they don't get immobilized. So it's not always, you're not going to have as many terra motes when fighting bosses. And so that's why Brutal Vine Creeper is going to help you increase your critical strike chance against bosses. So we'll have Petrify, Brutal Vine Creeper. You can, um, I actually don't like these two abilities here, but I do really like Stone Guard. It says here when you have Fortify for over 50% of your maximum life, your earth skills deal 4% increased damage. And we're all about increasing the amount of damage we have. So we're going to get that one point, two point, and finally we unlock our key passive and i'm going to get earth and might of course we're going full earth all out earth build this is going to give you lucky hit damaging enemies with earth skills have a five percent chance to restore all of your spirit and cause your attacks to be guaranteed critical strikes for five seconds so that will help with any spirit issues you might be having but again we're going to solve those again with the legendary aspect which is guaranteed but very very nice and it's also this five percent chance is increased by ten percent when you get a critical strike and another ten percent if the target is stunned immobilized or knocked back our boulder knocks back storm Storm Strike immobilizes, Vine Creeper immobilizes, there's lots, and, and also Boulder can stun when it overpowers, so lots of ways to increase our chance to get all of our spirit back and cause our attacks to be guaranteed critical strikes for five seconds. Now, while we're in Skaz Glen, we also want to get another aspect called Aspect of the Expectant. Attacking enemies with a basic skill increases the damage of your next core skill cast by 5 to 10%, up to 50%, so it's going to be 5%. So every if you hit a boss, you know, a couple times, or you just you attack with your Storm Strike, a couple times that's going to make your next landslide deal even more damage so very very helpful there to even boost the 
power of landslide further. And there's also one more we want to get, which is Edge Master's Aspect. Skills deal up to 24% increased damage based on your available primary resource when cast, receiving the maximum benefit when you have full primary resource. You know, you start the game, you're going to have full, full resource, you're going to start using your abilities, you're going to want that full 24% increased damage. When you're at 50%, it's still 12% increased damage. It's not the best aspect, which is why we'll be replacing it later, but it's guaranteed and it's a nice boost to your damage. And you can get this in the old stones in Skazlan. I don't know if I mentioned it, but aspect of the expectant is in the under root in Skazlan as well. So these are the four aspects you want to find when you go to Skazlan. You want the ballistic aspect, edge master's aspect, aspect of quicksand should be your number one priority. And then aspect of the expectant is also going to help with your core skill damage. So these are the aspects you can get in Skazlan. Now, as you continue to level, you're going to want to max out some of these passives we got stone guard and safeguard so we fortify more of our life and we can hopefully then have fortify over 50 percent of our max life and deal 12 percent increased damage which is, which is just an awesome bonus now this is where once again the build gets really silly good i just can't believe uh all the synergies possible we're gonna put one point into defiance which makes our nature magic skills deal four percent increased damage to elites and then we're going to get natural disaster we're actually going to want to put a lot of points into this your earth skills deal four percent increased damage to vulnerable enemies and remember, Storm Strike has a, I think, something like 50% chance to apply vulnerability. So we're going to be getting enemies vulnerable all the time. So that's an additional 12% on top of that 20% from vulnerability. And then we have Resonance. And this is what gets me really excited. It says here, Nature Magic Skills deal 2% increased damage. Triple this bonus if an Earth skill is the next skill cast after a Storm skill, or a Storm skill is the next skill cast after a Earth skill. We're going to put three points into that. So that's 6% multiplied by 3 is 18. And now we're going to, once we get this, start weaving our abilities. Now we might have just started by spamming Storm Strike and then spamming Landslide, but now we want to weave it. We want to do Storm Strike, Landslide, Storm Strike, Landslide. And the reason for that is every time we use an Earth skill after using a Storm skill and a Storm skill after an Earth skill, both of those are going to get 18% increased damage. So as you all know, Storm Strike is actually a Storm skill, of course, <laughs> based off its name. And it's also nature magic. And so basically by using Storm Strike, we get tons of synergy bonuses. We are starting to use storm skills as well, and we can get the full bonus of resonance, dealing 18% damage. I mean, at this point, Landslide probably has close to, a, like, double damage at this point with all of the plus damage bonuses we have. It's absolutely insane. <laughs> so that is really fun once you get this ability. Uh, resonance. Those are those are all the skills here. Uh, we're at 44 points. At this point, we have pretty much everything we're looking for, and we can probably just start pumping points into certain skills. So we want to make a boulder strong. So as you level, just put more points into Boulder. As you continue to level, you want to put more points into Earth and Bulwark to make that stronger. Then you can also put points into Vine Creeper to make that stronger. We have two points left. You can also just put those into Storm Strike to make it stronger. We have pretty much all of the passives we're looking for. Uh, if you find anything better, let me know. But I believe this is very, very strong. Uh, one thing I did do sometimes, we could take two points out of that, maybe one point out of Vine Creeper. You could put three points into Defensive Posture, which increases the amount of Fortify you gain from all sources by 15%. We're going to want fortify as much as we can. We want to stay above 50% of our max life fortified so that our earth skills will constantly deal 12% increased damage. Um, so so you could also go with that. But this is, and, and of course, you know, I actually found these not to be too good, but you could get these uh, upgrades to the ultimate. Now, when it comes to legendary aspects, let's continue down that road. We are going to want to get aspect of shared misery. This is in Hawazar, and Hawazar is definitely a great place to go after you're done with Skaz Glen. And the reason for that is because of this aspect. So lucky hit when you hit a crowd controlled enemy, there's a 30% chance that crowd control effect will spread to another unaffected enemy. Now, because we have aspect of quicksand, damage from earth skills slow enemies hit by 25%. Anytime we hit that enemy again, there's a 30% chance that it's just going to spread. So we, our skills don't have the greatest AOE, our earth skills, which we're going to change soon. But this, so this is actually very nice to get aspect of shared misery in order to help our uh, slows spread so that the slow is already on there when we attack. And so we get that nice 15% bonus. Uh, actually, it's more like 18 plus 15% bonus, um, which is huge every time we attack a, a crowd controlled enemy. Now we're also going to want to get once we're in Hauzar, there's a wonderful aspect called Aspect of the Ursine Horror. And this is where the build starts to shift towards its sort of mid to late game setup. Aspect of the Ursine Horror makes Pulverize now an Earth skill, also an Earth skill. And after casting Pulverize, Tectonic Spikes continue to deal 175 damage over two seconds. And this is actually a guaranteed legendary aspect you can get by completing Belfry, Zakara, and Hauzar. So you get both Aspect of Shared Misery and Aspect of the Ursine Horror in Hauzar. Once you get this, I think it's time that we get rid of our Vine Creeper. And we're going to go 
ahead and get Pulverize. We're going to get Enhanced Pulverize, which makes your next Pulverize overpower every 10 seconds while you remain healthy. And then Raging Pulverize. Enemies are stunned for two seconds when they are overpowered with Pulverize. And remember, Primal Landslide, when you immobilize or stun an enemy, you gain a Terra Mote. And so essentially with Pulverize, every 10 seconds, we're going to basically get what we got from Vine Creeper with the added benefit of this is now an Earth skill and it's going to benefit from Ballistic Aspect when you have Fortify your Earth skills gain plus two ranks. You don't have to spam Pulverize, but you should use it every 10 seconds so that you can overpower, which does a ton of damage, pretty much one shots everything. And then you also get Raging Pulverize, which is going to stun all of those enemies once they're overpowered, which is going to generate a bunch of Terra Motes for your Landslide. And every 10 seconds is better than every 20 seconds with Vine Creeper. Now, alternatively, you could still keep Vine Creeper if you don't want to get Aspect of the Ursine Horror if you've already unlocked your Snake Aspect Spirit Boon. The reason for that is because there is a Snake Spirit Boon called a uh, Pack Leader. And what this does is give you a 15% chance to reset the cooldown of your companion skills. And you can see that being very, very strong, right? Imagine if you, whenever you got a critical strike, you have a chance to reset your, uh, your, your companion skills. So if depending on how good that lucky hit is, Vine Creeper could be better if you can reset it frequently and basically always be able to use this. I don't think that it's going to proc enough because you already have to get a critical hit. You are, then you have to get that lucky hit chance pulled off and just the coefficients with it all. I think it's a much lower chance than we think. And so I don't think pack leader is going to be as strong, especially since it's only for the vine creeper and there are other spirit boons besides pack leader that, that you can use instead, like making your ultimate longer, which I believe is called cataclysm. Okay. So aspect of the earth scene horror, I really like, and it's sort of when you start shifting away from uh, companion skills and you're going to start using some, some bear skills, uh, which is the pulverize. And you can max that out like you did with uh, vine creeper. Okay. Now, once we're done with how is we're going to head to the dry steps for, I really like aspect of mending stone because it's going to basically make the duration of your earth and bulwark increased by six seconds, which is huge because currently it's three, which means it's a 200% increase in its duration. And the reason I like that is not so much so the barrier lasts longer, but so the unstoppable lasts longer. That's what's really powerful about this aspect. You can remain unstoppable for nine seconds. It's really, really strong. Now, if you're, now we haven't played the full content of the game. We don't know how much crowd control there is, but if you're looking for pure damage reduction, aspect of might is better. Check this out. Basic skills grant 25% damage reduction for four seconds. So when you hit storm strike, you automatically get 50% damage reduction. Kind of crazy. So I'm actually going to go with aspect of might, but if you're experiencing a ton of crowd control and you literally just can't move your character, then definitely get aspect of mending stone to make your unstoppable earth and bulwark last so much longer, literally like three times longer than it would have lasted before. So very, very strong, but I'm going to go with aspect of might recommend you do the same unless you encounter a ton of crowd control and by the way you can get both because you can just do both dungeons this one is it from dark ravine and mending stone is from sealed archives so sealed archives in dry steps or the dark ravine in dry steps both are defensive aspects put them in your pants by the way i am being deliberate about where i put these aspects so if you know i'll, I'll sh it's it's hard for me to save the build at different spots um because it changes so much but uh this is sort of the order i would go in yeah because this is just going to make you do more damage and yeah things like that and we're gonna we are going to eventually replace the helm in the chest which i'm pretty sure you guys know why but if you don't you're gonna be excited to find out and we actually also will eventually replace our neck aspect um which is really really crazy okay so the last uh things we need to get i believe we should be done with dry steps oh no there's two more we've got aspect of retaliation your core skills deal up to 20 percent increased damage based on your amount of fortify from seaside descent and dry steps and the reason you want that is because you're already building a ton of fortify and so it just fits in perfectly with the build for additional core damage skill damage, which by the way, we have pulverize and landslide. We're mostly using landslide, but we're also weaving in pulverize um, every 10 seconds for an overpowered one. And I believe our last one is from Kezhistan, aspect of retribution. Distant enemies have a 15% chance to be stunned for two seconds when they hit you and you deal 30% increased damage to stunned enemies. So the reason this is good is because boulder has stuns, pulverize has stuns. This also gives you a chance to have enemies get stunned when they hit you. 
and then you deal 30% increased damage to stunned enemies. And so it's kind of insane how you, know, you can keep an eye on when you're ready to overpower with Pulverize and just use that on an elite monster. They get stunned, follow up that stun with a landslide. I guarantee you're just going to like one shot that guy. <laughs> There's going to be so much bonus damage all put on top of that. Like it's going to be absolutely insane. Landslide's going to hit so hard following up a Pulverize that's overpowered and stunned someone. So uh, another very strong aspect. And there's actually what's really cool about druids is you can you could use a two-hander to make aspect of the expectant or whatever aspect you choose to put in here stronger but you can also get an offhand and those are totems um and so that's what i think is awesome because i played a shaman and wow <laughs> so i'm sticking with having uh, a totem okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put edge masters down here into the offhand and then uh, we're gonna get aspect of the umbral this is the one i forgot about so i apologize so aspect of the umbral this is something you're going to get in dry steps Restore one of your primary resource when you crowd control an enemy. Every single one of our earth skills will crowd control enemies. And so every time you attack with something, you get one resource back. Very, very strong. You get this from Champion's Demise and Dry Steps. Okay, so that completes uh, pretty much all the beginner aspects you can get from dungeons, um, guaranteed every single time. When it comes to, you know, looking for certain things, I recommend you go and use your obols to purchase gloves constantly because gloves, I made a whole video on it, but, but gloves basically have the highest chance of getting an offensive aspect. And that offensive aspect is going to um, basically be what you're looking for because what we're looking for is actually making pulverize even better right here pulverize creates a shock wave that travels forward dealing 90 to 130 percent of its damage to targets in its path so we're switching now from guaranteed aspects to things you're going to want to look for uh while you're leveling uh your character after you've already gotten these guaranteed ones so you want shock wave aspect and then you're also going to want to replace um aspect of retaliation i would say is probably the weakest we can go ahead and replace that with one aspect i think is absolutely crazy aspect of trampled earth trample now summons six landslide pillars it literally is basically casting landslide six times it's the craziest thing i've ever seen if you haven't seen it like i might just say don't even look online just wait until you can experience it yourself <laughs> it's absolutely insane each one basically six pillars as you as you trample forward um and its duration uh during its duration that deals 70 percent normal damage tramples now also a nature magic and earth skill so that's super exciting now at this point i would take points out of landslide because trample trample is now going to cast six landslides when you use it okay so and then i'm going to put the point into trample now we still want this this passive primal landslide because when you immobilize or stun an enemy you gain a terra moat you still want that and then each enemy hit by landslide which trample will now be using landslide will consume those terra moats so you still want this but now we're going to replace the ability on our bar with trample enhanced trample and then natural trample because we, we still want fortify um and so you can see the build is sort of changing now a little bit and you can put another point into trample um, so now basically, uh, actually, we could actually take that out of trample and put it five out of five pulverize. So now we're using pulverize more frequently because we've got uh, shockwave aspect, which in combination with aspect of the earth scene horror, pulverize is now pretty much set. It's an it's an earth skill. It's getting all the bonuses of earth skills and it has two aspects that make it much stronger. It's going to be very strong to just spam at this point. But now also, now that we have aspect of trampled earth, we now have landslide built into our trample. Now, granted, landslide used you know you can use it without a cooldown trample does have a 14 second cooldown uh but just imagine when you use trample it's going to cast a ton of landslides and deal a ton of damage and so you still have landslide essentially you're just switching and using pulverize more often so you can see how this build has, is starting to shift and change so at this point we actually have a lot of the aspects we're looking for and we're going to start working on the paragon tree because i imagine you're going to hit level 50 and you're not going to have access to uniques yet because you're going to have to do your keystone or capstone dungeon whenever it's called and so uh you're going to basically unlock your paragon board before you start finding uniques so we're gonna do the paragon board first and again i spent a bunch of time on this to make sure we're making intelligent choices so check this out the primary stat for druids is willpower that's going to increase our ba uh, basic skill damage and a lot of other things uh, or just all of our skills damage so we want as much willpower as possible we're going to get plus one percent damage plus five percent damage three percent life more life more damage and then we're going to work our way up here like this and then 
then we're going to get this glyph socket. You're going to find these in uh, Nightmare Dungeons, or I think you just find them throughout the world. You upgrade them within Nightmare Dungeons. And then, right, because you could choose left or right now. The right side is more of a defensive rare node. The left side is an offensive rare node. So I'm going to go left because we just want more damage. And then um, basically skipping these because we don't really want intelligence. And then we just want to get to our first Paragon board as fast as possible, which will be Earthen Devastation. Now, the name kind of gives it away what we're looking for. Um, but check this out. We're going to rotate this, this board, twice. All right. And then we want to make sure over here on the left is a press. Good. So that's this is how you kind of know because they look kind of similar. You don't want to start over here. You want to start over here because you want to be close to a press because it makes you deal 7.5% increased damage to crowd controlled enemies. Again, remember aspect of quicksand, right? Right down here. Damage from earth skills, slow enemies hit by 25%. So everything is always slowed as you hit stuff, which is a crowd control effect. So we're always getting that bonus. So let's go ahead and get earth and devastation first. I mean, there's really, it's not a complicated thing. <laughs> you just go and get it, right? Earth and devastation. Your earth skills deal 30% increased damage to enemies afflicted by crowd control. 30% additional damage. Amazing. And at this point, remember, we're using pulverize, which the reason I switched to pulverize too, if I didn't mention it, it has incredible AOE. Like if you've seen clips of pulverize being used with uh, the aspect, shockwave aspect, it's it's literally like your whole screen. So it's just way better AOE than, than, uh, than landslide ever was. And that's why I feel like it's 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 a better skill. I just think it's better because it's way more AOE. It's you're going to be clearing screens full of monsters way better. Once you get that, you're going to want to move over here and get a press 7.5% increased damage to crowd controlled enemies, 4.5% increased critical strike damage to crowd controlled enemies. So and we're going to get all of these surrounding ones, which make our crowd control damage even better. We're going to skip this one. This is another defensive. You could get it later, which I do eventually get, but it's not something that I'm like prioritizing right now. This is also a defensive aspect, but we kind of want this over here plus 5% earth skill damage and also plus 4.5% critical strike damage to crowd controlled enemies. So it really fits the theme. And the reason I'm not in a rush to get to the next board, and I think this is important, is because the next board, I would prefer it be survival instincts, which is the werebear uh, survival board. And it makes no sense to get that board unless we have Vasily's Prayer and Insatiable Fury. So depending on your luck, you know, you can, you can rush over to those Paragon boards, but I recommend probably going and getting this rare node up here, Crushing Earth, and then also just getting Ancestral Guidance instead because uniques are supposed to be super rare. So I'm assuming that you're going to not find them right away. So let's continue as if we didn't find the two uniques that really make this build once again look very different. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move this way. This is defensive. I understand that, but um, it's not terrible to get some defensive. 5% resistance to all elements plus 10 willpower. It's not terrible. And then we want to get all these willpower nodes, tons of willpower nodes. We can grab that one too. I'll take dexterity over intelligence, and then we just want all of these damage nodes. So there we go. So crushing earth, skill damage. These all things do the same thing. Earth skill damage, pretty much the same thing. Critical strike. And then we're going to, um, tons of willpower down here. So we're going to strength, willpower, willpower, willpower. And then we're going to get the ancestral guidance. If you got super lucky, then you can definitely go survival instincts, but we'll get to that. But I'm assuming that it takes a long time to get your uniques. And so that's why we're going for this one first. Yes, this is, this is actually perfect. The, the way the board is lined up. So we're going to get willpower, willpower. It's unavoidable. We're going to get intelligence, dexterity. And then here we're going to increase our maximum spirit, spirit on kill, reclamation, increased spirit, max spirit, and more spirit on kill, which is just going to be nice for sustain. And then we're going to get willpower, intelligence, blah, 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 all these basic ones until we get ancestral guidance. After spending 75 spirit, you deal 30% increased damage for five seconds. And the reason this is good is because pulverize costs exactly 35 spirit. You can actually make it cost a little bit more, actually. So it's 35, um, actually 15% more of 35 is something like 38. And so it's actually perfect. After you cast 30, so, so actually it is literally perfect. You cast two pulverizes and then you instantly get plus another 30% dam uh, increased damage for five seconds. And because you just got all these plus maximum spirit and spirit on kill, you should be able to cast a third pulverize not too long afterwards. That does 30% increased damage. And so that's why I like ancestral guidance. I think it's helpful um, in order to basically make your very resource hungry build a little bit less hungry. Um, there's actually also some really good aspects here. This one increases basic and core skill damage. This one over here increases core skill damage, which is pulverize. And uh, this one is a defensive one, but um, we can move up here and grab harmony for that core skill damage. Looks like we can get a ton of willpower this way. This also increases max spirit, max life, more max spirit, max life. Get all of these nodes, core skill damage. There it is. And then this is even more core skill damage, more core skill damage, and more core skill damage. So very, very 
very nice. And then we're going to move over here and grab finally, we're going to head to survival instincts. And this is a big one, but we have to rotate it there. This is the way you want it. Just like that. It kind of looks like a helmet a little bit. All right. So before we get into the survival instincts, there, there are some prerequisites. Do not start the, the survival instincts paragon board until you find Vasily's prayer, which is your earth skills are now wear bear skills and fortify you for one to two, which is awesome. Earth skills are now wear bear skills. That's amazing. And then we're going to want as well insatiable fury wear bear form is now your true form and you gain plus two ranks to all wear bear skills that is amazing you basically just got plus two ranks to every single ability you have <laughs> on your bars uh, which is awesome uh, except for storm strike storm strikes left out um, but other than that it, it's it's pretty insane um, yeah tramples already an earth skill pulverizes already an earth skill and now all your earth skills are wear bear skills uh, you got plus two ranks and you got fortify and more importantly you can now make sense going into the survival instincts paragon board which is focused on improving wear bear pretty much the entire time and so you want to start by going left you don't want to go right bulwark makes you you know more tanky but spearhead uh, is much better because it increases your damage by 12.5% to healthy enemies, which is amazing because of what Survival Instincts does. So let's move. Let's go ahead and move over here. Um, we're we'll up this way. So 12% uh, increased damage, and you can get another 12% uh, if you have the requirements met. And then we're going to go up here, and then all the way down here. It's actually a trick. You don't want to. You don't want to go like as fast as you can. You get all these willpower ones if you go this way. Dexterity, and then Survival Instincts. So what it does is, well, in Werebear form, you deal 1% increased damage up to 50% for every 1% difference in current life percent between you and the enemy. So it starts at zero, which is why Spearhead is really good because you're going to get 20, what, 25% increased damage with Spearhead against healthy enemies. And then once they're not healthy anymore, you're going to get the percentage of health missing in bonus damage. So let's say they're not healthy anymore. They're at, that means they're at 84% health or less, which means a 15% increase in damage or greater as they lose health. So this is why Survival Instincts is perfect with Spearhead, which is why I highly recommend go left on the spirit board and do not go right cool so that's uh that's that's basically it you can also get pretty much every aspect uh like rare node on here plus five percent damage well in werebear form like get that you're permanently in werebear form because you have insatiable fury you know increase your damage well in werebear form more and then move over here get that glyph even you can get some armor for it uh more armor more armor uh this is more armor as well and this is werebear damage and overpower damage you definitely want that so let's see this looks like the best way to get as many wisdom nodes as possible get all of these so we're gonna get this is one percent werebear skill damage all around overpower damage uh, both of them great we can also go over here get some of these damage while healthy, uh, increased damage while healthy, and then another 6.2% damage while healthy. Very, very awesome. And so we're almost out of points. And this is where I would say you've got pretty much all of the offensive things you can get. I know there's two that I really like for the werebear, Earth Druid, that don't actually make sense. And I know a lot of people probably might put this in the comments. They're like, hey, what about constricting tendrils? And what about heightened malice? So I'll tell you really quickly what those do. Heightened malice gives you, I think, 50% increased damage when three or more enemies near you are poisoned, right? Very strong. And then um, that's heightened malice. And then constricting tendrils gives your nature magic skills a chance to basically basically cast like vine creeper, which entangles and poisons, immobilizes. Um, the reason I don't get that, and actually we have to do one last thing once we start using pulverize primarily, which I forgot. So this is important. We actually need to get rid of resonance. And the reason we're getting rid of resonance is because pulverize is not a nature magic skill. And this is a very important distinction, which um, I wish they would change, but it is how it is. So if you read here, it says here, pulverize is now also an earth skill. It doesn't say it's also a nature magic skill like it does with trample, which is right here, aspect of trampled earth. It says here, trample is now also a nature magic and earth skill right so there's a distinction between earth magic and nature magic and trample or i'm sorry and pulverize is just an earth skill it's not actually nature magic so it doesn't benefit from resonance now that doesn't mean you can't you know still still get the bonus with boulder you potentially could um but it's not gonna you're not gonna get the bonus from pulverize so so keep that in mind uh and you're not gonna get anything that says nature magic so you're still gonna get earth skills so i'm gonna keep natural disaster but now don't worry as much as weaving between every single ability 
ability once you switch over to the pulverize build. And so this does give you some extra points to play with. You know, you can put them where you want. Maybe you want to put them into landslide again, you know, four out of five. Maybe you want to increase your maximum spirit, which I actually think is a really good idea because the final thing we're going to want is replace aspect of the umbral once you find it with the melted heart of Selig. And the reason this is, this is actually overpowered. We're now in like overpowered land. Like you're just optimizing the last part of your build. And by the way, when you're doing dungeons, you should be able to like nightmare dungeons. You should choose like which item slot you're going for or hell tides, things like that. Always go for the helm first, then go for the chest and then go for the amulet. That's sort of the order of prioritization for these uniques. So the melted heart of Selig gain 100% maximum resource with gift of the stag, you get plus 10 and then with heart of the wild, you get plus nine. And then we also got ancestral fortitude over here, which increased our maximum spirit by eight plus plus 1.6 bunch, a bunch of times, right? So if we double it, we're getting something like almost 300 maximum resource. And the reason this is insane, absolutely insane is because we have this earth and might key passive. The, the combos and the bonuses never end right here. It says lucky hit damaging enemies with earth skills have a 5% chance to restore all your spirit. <laughs> so you can see it's absolutely insane. Imagine if like you restore 300 spirit every time, you know, like you, you get this proc. And again, you can increase this 5% chance to plus 10% with a critical strike and plus 10% if they're stunned, immobilized, or knocked back. Absolutely insane. If you have 300 spirit, you should be able to, by the time you, you know, get a couple lucky hits, probably get that back to 300 max spirit, which is just, it's insane. Um, this build basically should be able to pulverize nonstop. Uh, I imagine it does have a drawback when you take damage, drain three to six resource for every 1% of life you would have lost instead. Um, also, once again, I, I forgot, so I'm sorry, but we need to switch around points a little bit. You actually want to get some werebear skills, right? Once we get Vasily's Prayer and Insatiable Fury, we're now always in a werebear and you can start switching things up. So, right, we take points out of Resonance and you want to put points into uh, Mending and then uh, you don't have to get these. This is actually kind of weak to be totally honest with you. <laughs> like the, the Paragon points are better. Uh, and put them into Provocation. When you are werebear for at least three seconds or, or for at least 15 seconds, your next skill will overpower. Um, you're always going to be a werebear with Insatiable Fury, so you get way more overpower on your pulverizes on whatever other skill you want to use um and then uh you can and, and we're, we're over on skill points you can't see it but you, you can take stuff out of like earth and bulwark you know you, you don't have to have it five out of five you can just have it one for that unstoppable and the four to five mechanic it doesn't need to be that strong um and then also you want to put one point into predatory instinct it's kind of a waste but it can help your storm strike and then you want to put three points into iron fur you gain nine percent damage reduction while in wear bear form and again with insatiable fury we are all always in wear bear form and so flat nine percent damage reduction all the time i will take it very very good not to mention it's it's like we got 25 percent from storm strike another 25 percent from aspect of might so that's 50 percent damage reduction add another nine percent it's it's basically 60 percent damage reduction and then there's even more in the paragon board which we could pick up now that we kind of got the offensive aspects like right here five percent resistance to all aspects grab that really easily you can go over here uh even more resistance and uh decreased damage taken over time uh and then basically you just start picking up here you can get this glyph socket as well start picking up some defensives and um this build is absolutely crazy you, you again it's gone through so many transformations right like you start as one build you switch to another and then you switch to another depending you know on the items you get the aspects you have it's it's very dynamic it's very powerful i truly believe <laughs> especially once you get Mar melted heart of selig insatiable fury and vasili's prayer as well as the different paragon nodes like this build kind of enters kind of like la la land like it's just this is too good you know um it's kind of overpowered i feel like you should you should just i feel like never run out of spirit with this build which is fun who wants to use basic abilities when you can just spam pulverize over and over and over so so yeah um this is the build let's uh let, let me know what you think guys um i'll send you a link of the finished build how about that i'll do that for you um I'll put that in the description so you can see kind of the finished uh, version. And uh, and guys, um, if you enjoyed this video, do me a huge favor. Click that like button. And if you want to see more super in-depth guides like this, click that subscribe button. It helps me and it helps you get notified when there is more builds like this. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.